Imagine living your life after 50 and feeling energized and excited about your future. Welcome to the Women in the Middle podcast, the podcast for women who are ready to figure out what they want and create the life they deserve. Here's your host and master certified life coach, Susie Rosenstein. Hey there, welcome back to the podcast, Women in the Middle. I'm your host, Susie Rosenstein, and I am so glad to be here with you again for this week's episode, which is all about prioritizing downtime in midlife. Today, we're talking specifically about the struggle to prioritize downtime for yourself, the chatter, the resistance, the drama. That's what we're talking about. It comes up all the time with women our age. So it's going to be a good one. But before we go there, I just want to remind you that I have a free Facebook group with your name on it. It's called the Women in the Middle Community, and it's where we continue this conversation. You know, the one about how to love your life after 50. So if you're not in there with us, what is taking you so long? Just go to www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Women in the Middle Community and click join. Can't wait to welcome you into the group. Okay, so let's get going. Most of you know that this thing called downtime is a good thing. Well, at least you understand this philosophically, intellectually perhaps, but let's take a look at the definition of what downtime is because there's a disconnect going on here. The definition for the way we're talking about it today is a time of reduced activity or inactivity. This is pretty easy to get your head around because you're so busy most of the time when you have downtime, it's the opposite. You typically slow down, you reduce the amount of activity you do, or maybe stop all activity. You might rest, you might nap, you might do a relaxing activity, or you might just do something that's extremely opposite of what's keeping you so busy. But, There's another definition for downtime, and I think it's pretty interesting. It's the time during which a machine, especially a computer, is not working or is not able to be used. It's a time during a regular working period when an employee is not actively productive. Ah, there we go. So what comes up with a lot of women our age is a thought that downtime is not productive. Can you relate to this? So now that we've taken a look at the definitions, you can see that it's technically true that downtime is not productive, but there's more to it than that. It's what you make being productive mean. The definitions come from the idea of machines being broken or not working, and that's why there's downtime so that the typical productivity can't continue like on an assembly line. Think back to that classic scene in I Love Lucy with the chocolates on that assembly line, that conveyor belt. Lucy and Ethel were supposed to be wrapping the chocolates. What happened was that once they got the hang of it, the conveyor belt delivering the chocolates to them eventually sped up. The point was to be more productive, but there was a problem. They couldn't keep up. To compensate, they just kept shoving the chocolates into their mouths to try their hardest to keep up, but didn't, and it was hilarious. Now imagine what would have happened if the conveyor belt actually broke down. They would have had serious downtime in line with the definition of downtime and would have just been standing there not being productive, not able to do their job. And we would have been deprived of the hilarity that ensued with the episode that was creative. That's the kind of downtime that is by definition unproductive. But when women in the middle talk about downtime, they also refer to not being productive. But nothing's broken. In fact, there's all kinds of research evidence that rest and relaxation, downtime, can actually save you time and make you more productive in the long run, let alone happier, can make you happier too. Even with Lucy and Ethel, when they were asked to do a job that was too much for them, that is, when the conveyor belt was delivering the chocolates way too quickly, they actually needed more downtime to be more productive. They were overwhelmed and weren't doing the best job possible. 
Now, as a human, you need rest. And as you know, when you have a good sleep, you wake up feeling refreshed. It's kind of like that with your mind, too. Now, I'm not going to attempt to go into the details of brain science, but there's a lot of research to show that giving your brain time to rest is important for all kinds of things, including your actual health, not just productivity. It looks like it might actually be bad for your brain to push yourself too hard and not incorporate enough downtime in your life. And most of you would agree that you're probably not getting enough sleep, let alone little breaks throughout the day in your regular schedule. When you rest or have downtime, your brain does a bit of a refresh. You've probably experienced this firsthand, like like when you're having trouble being productive, you might go for a nap or take a walk or even take a hot shower, take a break, right? This shift in attention serves as a chance for your brain to refresh so you can ultimately be more productive. I'm talking about taking breaks from concentration, little meditation breaks, mini naps, and of course, on a larger scale too, like an actual vacation. So you get it. Rest is good. Downtime is good. So why are so many smart, highly productive women fighting with this concept? I have to ask you, are you one of these women? Here's how to tell. You know you should schedule breaks during the day, but you often work through lunch. Maybe you don't get enough hours of sleep. When you try to have downtime, you find yourself super distracted about what you could be ticking off your list instead. During your scheduled downtime, you notice yourself thinking that what you're doing for yourself feels indulgent. You resist even planning downtime into your schedule. So, am I speaking your language? Here's the thing. You agree that downtime's important, For other people, that is, right? (laughs) But what about yourself? If you're struggling with giving yourself the downtime you know you need, then your thinking is the problem. You might not even know what you're thinking, and that's okay, but let's dig around a little bit. The thing is that if you want to know what you're thinking, you got to look at your results. What that means is to look around at what is happening in your life. If you don't take downtime, if you don't have downtime, if it's not in your life, you don't see it anywhere, if you don't embrace it, then there's something you're thinking that is creating that for you. So take out a big flashlight and shine it on your brain. Let's see what's going on up there. Start with this. Just ask yourself why you resist adding downtime to your day or even to your life when you know it's important. Just ask yourself why. Think about it for a minute. Don't dig too deeply either. The first answer that started to pop up is probably the one that needs to be noticed. Do you think it's not as important as work? Do you think you're too busy? Do you think you'll do it later? Do you think it's not productive and therefore not important? Do you think someone will think you're not working hard enough or maybe that you're lazy? Do you think you don't deserve it? Do you question how valuable it really is? Okay, now take a good look at the concept of productivity. Ask yourself what you make being productive mean. Or you can even take a look at a close cousin. Ask yourself what you make being too busy mean. Now take a look at the way you value your work for your career, your work for what you do at home, and your work when it comes to self-care. See what I mean? You don't have to go too deep to discover some of what you're thinking. You have to remember you're making a choice every time you do or don't do something. You're not a little kid that's being forced to go to piano lessons, right? Remember those days? So you have a thought that is creating your feeling. Then everything you do or decide not to do is because of this feeling. Whatever happens as a result of this chain of events your thought, your feelings, and your behavior, all of that will absolutely prove what you're thinking about downtime. Let me show you what I mean. A common thought I hear from a lot of women our age is that I should be getting more done. They're working hard, they feel busy, but they still have this thought. So does that sound familiar to you? 
So you also know that you should take breaks or go to bed a little bit earlier or do yoga in the morning or even take a nap every now and again. Maybe even have a cup of tea without distraction. But you catch yourself thinking that you should be getting something else done, getting more done. In fact, you love multitasking. You get a weird sort of satisfaction for being as highly productive as possible. So when you think that thought that you should be getting more done, how do you think you will start to feel? Perhaps unaccomplished? I don't know what it is for you, but for me, when I think that thought, it's definitely unaccomplished. And when you feel unaccomplished, can you see yourself enjoying that cup of tea or taking the dog for a walk without taking a business call at the same time? All you can think about is finishing that document, sending that email, or squeezing in three errands on the way home. When you are feeling unaccomplished, it's hard to have downtime. I think it's impossible. You see downtime as an open space of time, time that you could put to better use than doing something for yourself. If you forced yourself to take downtime, you would probably be distracted and antsy about what you could be doing instead, which wouldn't work to actually create the downtime. Remember, a time to rest your brain. Now, the downtime we're after is reduced activity or inactivity because that's the goal. It didn't happen because something broke. Downtime isn't the booby prize. It's the desired prize, the gift to yourself. So when you're not having downtime, you're proving your original thought that you should be doing something else. There you go. A lovely little thought loop. Now you can see that when you think thoughts that don't support you setting a priority for downtime, it just won't happen. It can't. Your brain looks for evidence to prove thoughts. This is actually good news when you're supervising your brain, but when your brain is just running amok, not so much. Another common reason I hear from women our age about why they don't prioritize finding downtime for themselves is this. It's not right to rest like this. It's indulgent, like luxurious or excessive. Now, come on, my friend. Really think about this. A cup of tea next to a window with a warm, fuzzy blankie on your lap, listening to some music for a little break. I'm not talking about taking a $20,000 month-long vacation. Just some downtime. (laughs) Like all thoughts, you choose to think them, and the thought will have consequences for you. Notice how thinking that it's indulgent to have downtime makes you feel. My guess is something that won't serve you in prioritizing it more. It's just going to get in your way. So let's take a closer look. Imagine you're super busy, but you know you need downtime, so you decide to prioritize rest just a little bit of quiet time with nothing else planned. You see that you don't have any programs or classes scheduled on Thursday nights, so you decide to schedule rest into that time slot. Thursday night rolls around and you see rest blocked in on your calendar. Can you imagine that? You get comfy on the couch and listen to some relaxing ocean sounds from that fun meditation app you just downloaded. You set the timer for 15 minutes. You close your eyes, you get seven minutes in, and you notice that you start to think that it feels weird to sit there this long, just relaxing, not doing anything. You talk yourself out of that distraction and try to focus again. Three more minutes go by, and now you're squirming and can't focus because you can't get over the idea that it's not right to rest like this, to just be sitting for this long without doing anything. Lovely, right? The thought it feels indulgent to rest like this creates the feeling of being agitated. And when you're agitated, you are not resting. You prove your thought that it's not right to rest. Right? (laughs) More ways to block yourself from downtime. Overall, this whole problem with the way so many women in the middle look at downtime and productivity is becoming more clear. It's not being fancy or luxurious to have downtime. And downtime is doing nothing on the one hand, but not doing nothing on the other. You're actually giving yourself downtime. 
rest. You're giving yourself rest. That is something. So what can you do to get a handle on all of this? Wanting downtime is really like wanting any other change in behavior. So here are the five steps you need to take to create more downtime for yourself, okay? Step one. First, you need to have awareness of what you're thinking and feeling. It doesn't matter which you identify first. What's important is to know that thinking and feeling are related. So if you can put your finger on your feeling, identify the thought creating it. If you identify your thought first, notice how you feel when you think that thought. The bottom line is that the way you feel is why you don't have downtime in your life, my friend. You may want to journal. That's really helpful for some people. Journaling helps some people sort this sort of thing out. So give it a try. Step two, you got to clean up your thinking. This means deciding how you want to feel about creating downtime on purpose and then creating a new thought that will create the actual feeling for you. Now, it has to be useful to you, right? If it's not useful, it's not going to move you forward with your plan, which is, of course, your desire to make downtime happen, to make it actually happen. Okay, step three. Then you need to practice thinking the new thought until it becomes believable. You may have to think it before you believe it, and that's okay. Because if you let the old thoughts creep in, you're going to get the old result, which is what you have right now, no downtime. Step number four. Now that you've set the stage, decide what kind of downtime you actually want. Your new thoughts and feelings will drive your ability to actually take the downtime you want to have. So here are some great ideas of things to do and some habits that will help you create downtime. I'm sure you've thought of some of these before, but I think seeing this list or hearing this list in this context will help. So one is a morning routine. Another one is adding downtime to your schedule by not filling every nook and cranny with typically productive tasks. How about this one? Think about how many hours of sleep you want and actually put bedtime in your calendar. (laughs) You can take more naps. You can consider downloading a meditation app. You can do activities like art, drawing, singing, activities that feel relaxing to you, right? So for me, it's beating with wire. I love that. You can allow yourself to daydream. I do my best daydreaming in the shower. (laughs) I find it very relaxing. And, you know, you can take a longer shower. You can try coloring for adults. Those adult coloring books, pretty fun. And you can practice being more present when you're doing something solitary, like walking the dog or listening to music. And, you know, like not dealing with your phone. And step number five. So you need to practice downtime without drama. And what I mean by this is that it's important to decide ahead of time that downtime is happening, right? (laughs) It's gonna happen. And then stick to your decision. You gotta honor it relax into your commitment to yourself. The drama happens in your mind when you focus on all of that mind chatter about what you should be doing instead of the downtime. So just plan it and do it. (laughs) So there you have it. No matter how busy you are or what you currently think about rest in your life, you can create more downtime for yourself. Even if you value being productive, even if you like being busy, and even if you want to get a lot done. If you buy the concept that downtime is good, then you, my friend, can have more of this goodness in your life too. That's it for this episode. I hope I gave you some food for thought. You're only one thought away from creating what you want in your life. So I need you to ask yourself, what about you? Do you have what you want? Do you know what you want? Or are you feeling frustrated and stuck yourself more so than ever before? Super common in midlife. You might just be ready for a change. I want you to have more fun and be more excited about your life. So I think we should talk. Just go to www.talktosusie.com and book your free consult call. I'm accepting applications to work together right now. And if you book the call, we can see if we're a good fit and we can take it from there. 
If you like what you've heard on today's episode, just head over to the Women in the Middle podcast on iTunes and leave me a review. I totally appreciate the time it takes to do this, and it really helps other women find the podcast, so thanks in advance. Check out the show notes with more information and links on my website at www.susierosenstein.com. And while you're there, don't forget to grab your free download, 10 Surprisingly Simple Steps to Bust Out of Your Midlife Funk. Just go to www.susierosenstein.com forward slash midlife funk. Let's do this, ladies, one thought at a time. Thanks so much for listening. 